Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. I'm going to tell you a story today that technically happened yesterday, but it happened after I ended the vlog, so I decided that I would just save it. I told this on Breakfast Stream this morning, but honestly, it was funny enough that I think it deserved its own spot on the vlog. So here goes. This is the story of Kepler and the hot chocolate. Last night, as you may have seen on the vlog, we took a little Christmas walk. It was wonderful, had a great time, came back and wanted to warm up from being outside, so I decided to make myself some hot chocolate. Brought the hot chocolate upstairs, sat it on my desk. It's important that I let you know at this point in the story that I've never spilled anything upstairs. Um, I've never spilled anything at my desk, to my knowledge, in any of the places that we've lived. I've always been really, really careful, and it's something I take seriously because i got a bunch of equipment up here. But I had my little mug of, of hot cocoa, sat it down, and it was only just a few seconds later, Kepler had followed me up the stairs, and sometimes he'll jump in my lap, but sometimes he just kind of like walks around and meows, and he wants me to pick him up. And that's what he was doing. So I was like, all right, buddy, I, you know, you, you want to spend time with dad? That's no problem. So I, I reach down, I pick him up, and I'm putting him up onto my lap. And as I do, his tail flaps the hot chocolate. And it was in a, it was in a mug. It's in a pretty sturdy mug. So the mug didn't get knocked over, but he did hit the top of the you know, the hot chocolate, and hot chocolate went everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Like, back to the scanner. There was, like, drops, little tiny drops, like, all the way back to the scanner. It was all over my keyboard. It was even over to the other side of the desk. It just, like, it must have just hit at just the right angle and it went everywhere. And when it happened, I, like, it caught me off guard because I wasn't... I didn't pick him up that, even that close to the hot chocolate, but, you know, I picked him up and he was, his tail was able to reach it. It wasn't like super, super hot, so it's not like he got burned or anything. However, after I did that, I, you know, I finished putting him on my lap and the first thing I saw after I realized that hot chocolate had went everywhere was that his tail was covered in hot chocolate. I mean, probably a good inch and a half or so of the end of his tail was just basically dripping in hot chocolate. And in my infinite wisdom and in worry for my son, because cats are not supposed to consume chocolate, and being uncertain of what to do in that moment, but just understanding in my head he cannot have hot chocolate. He cannot have chocolate. If he cleans his tail, it'll be bad. He'll be sick or worse. The best that I could come up with in my moment of panic was to insert the cat's tail into my mouth. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, when you, when you, when you retell the story, you're like, oh, this is dumb. But at the time, I had picked him up, put him on my lap, and I was I was worried for him, and I was like, I gotta act fast before he drinks this hot chocolate. And I just took his tail and went, ah. <laughs> now when I did this, Kepler, who was now standing on my lap, turned to face me with eyes as big as saucers, almost as if to say, Father, are you eating me? Our, our trust that we've established over the past 10 years is being actively broken. But I did what I had to do. And, uh, you know, he actually started, I had, I had his tail in my mouth and he whipped his head around and I could see that there was a moment of panic for him of like, what's happening? And I was worried that he would jump down. So with my other hand, because one hand was grasping the tail. With my other hand, I, I cuffed him by the neck so he wouldn't jump down. So there I was holding my cat with his tail about three inches into my mouth. And then I just went, Hoo! you might be saying, first off, that's dumb. Second off, 
Certainly you had a mouthful of fur. I absolutely did. I absolutely did. And after having cleaned up Kepler in this manner, and reflecting instantly on like, man, that was dumb. I put them on the ground. I grabbed nearby tissues because there were tissues nearby. If I would have taken just another split second to realize that. I cleaned him up, cleaned up my desk, and then I went and washed his tail under the sink uh, to make sure that that was all cleaned up. And yeah, that's my story. And when it happened, you know, after I got everything cleaned up, I was like, oh my God, Mallory's gonna die laughing. I went downstairs, Mal was in her office and uh, sitting at her computer, and I recounted this story exactly as I've told it to you now. Before I had even finished the story, Mal was laughing so hard, she could not breathe. And it's at near as we were getting near the end of the story, she said, stop, stop, I have to pee, I have to pee. And she had to get up and go to the bathroom before I was able to actually finish the story. But I had a good time. I had a, you know, I, it, it was, it was memorable. It was memorable. It actually, it reminds me of another story involving, um, Sagan, uh, because we had went to see a, uh, traveling, not, not the traveling circus, but the traveling circus-esque show with, like, trapeze artists and, uh, unicyclists and all that sort of thing. One of the things that they had there is they had a performer who, I believe it was a cat. Mao says it was a dog. I can't remember at this point. It was a small animal, and the person was doing, like, rolls and cartwheels and junk on stage, and, like, the, the animals walking over them. And when we got out of the performance, this was a few years ago, and I'm sure it's on the vlog from a few years ago where I talked about this. But when we got out of the performance, I was like, Mao Sagan is so smart. He could do that. So when we got home... <laughs> And I, I, I'm so upset we never filmed this because it's one of the funniest things of my entire life. When we got home, I got on the ground and I laid on my back and I lifted my feet up in the air and I put Sagan on my chest and encouraged him to walk forward between my legs and I was going to do like a backwards roll and have him walk up over my, my body as if I was, you know, a, a barrel or whatever. And he started... And he started walking and I lifted my legs up and I started to, to move my body back and I was going to do a backwards roll. And he lost his footing. And when he lost his footing, his leg split. And when his leg split, his little cat butthole landed right on my mouth. And when Mal tells this story, she said it caused Sagan a lot of alarm very quickly because his head whipped around like, what just happened? Also, I was like, oh, God, what just happened? And uh, again, a situation where Mal got to see that live and she just about died laughing. I miss Sagan so much. I really do. But that was a wonderful story that I had to wash my mouth out with soap. I was like, oh, God. But it's, it's just one of these things that you, you make these memories um, even if it's a ridiculous thing that happens and you remember this sort of thing your your whole life and uh, It's it's just funny that I've always thought about that story with Sagan It's always been something Mal and I come back to probably once a year and we laugh about and now we have You know an almost equivalent story with with, uh, with Gabby who is up here just relaxed He's just chilling He's having himself a snooze He's a good boy. Okay, that's it. I've taken up enough of your time. I hope you enjoyed my story. It was uh, probably not the best way to handle the situation, but it's fine. My, uh, my temporary idiocy created a memory. And that's, that's good enough for me. Thanks for watching. Let's be back tomorrow, shall we?